All right, all right, all right. What's up, everybody, and welcome back. The creative genius himself, Estrella, down here in the bottom left side of the map. He's playing up against Rainer in the top right. Rainer for Basilisk. Estrella, who I believe is actually teamless right now. Got to see some new sponsors get on him. He's still in the clan for Macharino, though. So am I Am I misinformed uh, on that? Because people told me that his, his Macharino sponsorship was over. You guys know how I sometimes complain about pro players not having their clan tags? Has Estrella just kept his old team's tag and he's given him free rep anyway? What a nice guy. The Macharino people are pretty chill and big StarCraft fans, so I wouldn't uh, be against that if that's the case. Anyways, it is a PvZ. It's the round of eight between him and Rainer in the ESL Weekly Cup. Rainer's playing from Korea. Estrella's playing from America. Estrella will have a ping advantage. San Diego to US West will allow him to micro a little bit more. But uh, Rainer plays Zerg, so what micro do you need anyway? Unless he's dodging disruptor shots. Now, funnily enough, guys, um, for those who don't know, all the top, uh, most of the, the, the non-Korean players actually have a special key to spam the gather command. So they don't actually have to click each time when they're trying to do this little drone micro dance. Rainer was talking about this on his stream. He has a button he just holds down, hovers the mouse over, and it spams clicks so that his drone can fight. Because otherwise, you can't click fast enough compared to the person who's holding a button down attached to that so if you just have a button held down on on uh, rapid fire essentially you could basically you know just out click someone and always be the first to steal the minerals that being said Australia does forget to break that does mine five minerals and heads out of there second pylon comes up in the main base this is crimson court it's a map that is absolutely fantastically interesting because you've got these two paths through the middle this one as well as this one that goes through the rich gas base and uh, the whole sides of the map are cut off. Either minerals that you have to mine through three different patches, one trip each to get rid of them, or double rocks. That's right. Rock, 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 rock. Same thing there. Rock, 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 rock. So this whole left side of the map and whole right side of the map are cut off. Only the two middle lanes are immediately unlocked. And, and because of that, you have very unique expansion patterns where players choose to open up the rocks or the minerals, where they choose to expand. Do they go for the rich gas space, which... We know Protoss players love to try and get away with a third on the Rich Gas, but it's very vulnerable because it's so far forward to certain, like, Ravager attacks and that sort of stuff. Here we go. Adept coming forward. Now, Rain is going for a pretty quick Ling Speed, but he doesn't super need it because this Adept is not coming over that early. On the other hand... If he can surround those adepts before the uh, the oracle arrives, that would be real nice. Now, Australia sees a lot of drones. This is a big sign of macro from his opponent as he forgets to cancel the shade. Oh, Australia. <laughs> Good thing hold he holds the choke point, but not. Nah, he only holds it for a second. Gets himself a drone at something, but it's definitely not what he was looking for. Big mistake for Australia this early on, and something he can't be making those mistakes anymore. He does get himself a second. No, he, missed, he misfires there. Big mistakes for Estrella early on. Rainer's going to be happy to take advantage. You give Rainer an inch, he will take a mile. Rainer is very, very clutch at running away with ZVP. But uh, I do feel that psychologically, Rainer has a big issue in the matchup right now. He's joking about it, not knowing what to do, losing to 5k Protoss players, all this sort of stuff. And as funny as his jokes have been, uh, I, I think he'll be the first to admit that, no, 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 he, he, he honestly is struggling really hard in the matchup. I, I think... Um, he's got to play a bit looser as a player. I was trying to encourage him to study Dark and really look at some of those wild all-ins. And I do think you, you don't have to play just as all-in as Dark does because Dark, you know, he's so extreme on the aggressive end and it's the occasional Lurker rush from Dark that balances him out. But I think you can be much better at rushing Lurkers, rushing Hive, rushing to AD Workers most games and just one in three or four games mixing in the, the big surprise attack. But right now, what I've seen from Rainer recently is almost no surprise attacks. And I think the, the Protoss players are having so much room to breathe. And I've always said, PVT, if you study TY, one of the greatest build designers of Terran, one of the best TVP players of all time, um, what made him so good against Protoss is he was always coming up with new builds to surprise Protoss. Now, why am I talking about Terran? Because versing Protoss, PVP, ZVP, TVP, it doesn't matter. There are shared things there. What is the weakness of Protoss? Surprise. If they do not know what you're doing, they will be vulnerable. They are because they have to be greedy at certain stages of the game and rely on their scouting to try and read what the opponent's doing. If they're not just doing a timing attack a la Zest, which Australia is definitely not a Zest style timing attack player, he's much more of a reactive macro guy who just has creative pressures that he mixes in. He needs to know what you're doing. And if he can't figure out what you're doing, 
he's going to struggle super freaking hard. So I want Rainer to be hard to be decipher, de deciphered here. I want him to be kind of tricky and try and catch Australia off guard. So far, though, it looks like just a big macro play for him. He is equal in workers. He's got overlord speed on the way. Mm, maybe thinking of doing a giant maxed queen walk. It's a late queen walk if he does go for it, though. Stalkers on the front already causing him big problems. Ooh, Zergling does set off the stasis trap. Well, microed. Astraea has a forge on the way only now. This has been a four-gate blink pressure with a delayed forge, guys. His blink is not quite ready, so he's playing cautiously. Nine roaches on the way. So Rainer is going for a super delayed queen walk. Guys, he is actually going to use the overlords to drop creep or even or even actually make dropper lords. He's going to do the German taxi. It's a very surprising one, though, because it's kind of late, which I said I wanted him to be surprising. He very well may catch Australia off guard. Right now, though, Australia is not investing in a lot of tech. He's literally just warping in units as much as he can. The oracles. I see a kind of lightly saturated third base. That's a big tell. Does Australia read it? He does. He does. A lot of Protoss players just don't look closely enough at this. They go, oh, it's a lot of drones. That's not a lot of drones. There's there's a lot of workers missing as well as a gas. Australia immediately got the read. He's building batteries on the high ground and the low ground and his stasis trap. Beautiful play from Australia here. Adapting. And I, I think the delay on the attack may mean that it doesn't really have a chance of working. I, I think Australia's got the numbers, but I've seen, I've, I've been very wrong about this in the past. Let's see. Oh, he gets a full drop award and a second one. Oh, no. Oh, the oracles can now kill that queen. But big biles to punish. Nope, blink is ready again. He already blinks away. Oh, my lord. Dude, Rainer just got absolutely savaged there. Great plays by Australia. He can take this whole thing out. He can blink on his face now, man. Yeah, the, the Lings are going to come forward, but dude, this is such a good fight. Now, the Oracles do run out of energy. That's the one saving grace there for Rainer. The Stalker's trying to chase him down. I mean, Estrella is miles ahead. He's only on four gateways, but he does have a fourth Nexus almost finished as well. And Rainer's like, I'm going to start an Evo Chamber in three Queens now. He's so screwed. Rainer has had an absolutely disastrous start. He failed to hide his all in, and it wasn't a particularly fast one, and he got shut the heck down. Oh, I mean, he hit a good timing considering how late it was. I'm not saying Rainer messed up his execution. I'm saying strategically, he chose to do a 56 drone timing that just is naturally one that hits a bit later. It's not like, oh, he messed up his macro. It's just that he chose a late attack and Australia was nonstop warping in stalkers four at a time. Now, that was some good snipes there. Getting those warping in stalkers is actually really big. Can't cancel the warpings once you start them. But quite a few lings die in return as well. Units lost have still 1,600 resources in favor of Estrella. Estrella's going charge. Eight gates and a robo. He's up to four bases right now. Uh, Rainer, he's going for a fourth hatchery in the middle. Infestation pit and Bane there. So he's going to play Ravager Ling Bane and try to take up the hive. Stalkers say goodbye Ravagers. They get rid of two of those Ravagers and blink away. I do think Estrella could just straight up kill him if he just commits hard to the Zealot Stalker aggression off, say, 10 to 12 gates and does a bit of Zealot multi-prong as well. But he's going to play it a bit safer. He's adding Storm. Cannons and batteries spread across his bases. Nice stasis trap does block some of those Zerglings. There's a little bit of Oracle energy, but not enough to really do much. Uh, one Oracle could turn the laser on to punish those Zerglings. One Stalker goes down, but he gets another Ravager. Dude, Estrella's trading is lit right now. He's all over it. Cannon battery on the third, cannon battery on the fourth. Eight gases. He's making so many cannons, though. I guess this is the one thing I don't like about Estrella's uh, cannon focus right now. It's good for insurance. Just just don't go too many, you know. Actually try to be aggressive off this advantage rather than just defensive because otherwise you're going to let Rainer potentially back into the game if you give him, I don't know, seven more minutes to recover. Rainer's got a 74 worker count. He's only down 14 workers, which I know sounds like a lot, but 74 workers you can max out on. It's just that right now his army is so fragile. It's a few Ravages and Lings. It's, it's what, five queens? He's trying to go Broodlords which Rainer normally doesn't like going straight Broodlords, but I think it makes sense on this map. He's got a few lings on the right side. The Zealot Cannon more than enough to deflect that. Storm is finished. Five High Templar gathered up behind. I, I want to see Australia be more aggressive here. He's going to start air weapons, so it looks like it with four more gateways, he's going to go 12 gates. He's got a Prism coming out. He is going to try to be somewhat aggressive, but I think he's doing it with the mindset of I want to go Sky Toss behind, and that's really where I'm going to excel, which is not a bad way of doing things. I do like the progression of keep the pressure up and transition at the same time hatchery cancelled on the right side storm on the ravages very nice biles do take out a single stalker but only a single one zealots are kind of running out ahead of the pack a little bit great micro by reina but seven drones have already fallen oh my god good storms 
Great storms. A big zealot warp in could be massive right here. The stalker positioning is good. I think this is a good fight for Australia right now. But the Archons do fall. Rainer's trying to hold his ground. Stalkers blink on top. Goodbye, Ravagers. Drones are being forced into the fight. Great trades for Australia. And it looks like this game is pretty much in the bag. Once the drones are pulled off, you know you're screwed. Rainer went for a big all-in at the start. Did not work out. He got completely slapped down. I got to watch the rewind of that very quickly one more time. He hit about seven minutes, right? Let's check the timing that he hit there. Yeah, it's about seven minutes just before then. And um, yeah, a bit of a scary thing blinking forward like that. But dude, the stasis trap sees it and he's just like, wait a second, I can, I can just one shot that. And huge, huge mistake for Rainer to wait so long on the unload to not have his army out in front. That's such a rough start. And then the Biles come in. I thought, oh, maybe, maybe. No, no, Blink's already ready. Just an easy hold for Australia. And to be fair, this is not something that he just did effortlessly. He scouted. He built a ton of batteries. He stayed on four gates, delayed his forge a lot, and was non-stop warping in for a good two minutes before this. There was a lot that set up for him to be this perfect mixture of aggressive with his own stalkers and then swapping into a solid defense. Great play by Australia in map one. All right, down here in the bottom left side of the map, guys, we've got Australia going for a Nexus first on the gold on 17 supply. Um, what? <laughs> Raiders also going hatch first to the gold, which is incredibly risky and I think can get punished by aggression so easily because Adepts can hit the high ground. They can run in there. You can run in here. It's, just, it's so hard to defend that base. But this is going to be weird because Australia doesn't even need to punish it. He's just like, no, 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 I can just I can just take my own gold and just defend. So, I mean, he's going to have the wall off up here, which is nice. He could full wall it at some point, um, just so he only has to worry about defending this area with his units. But, oh, man, I, I, it's going to be interesting. Um, Oh, oh, what about the Zest build? Um, Zest, was it Zest? Um, someone used to do this, and they would build a robo at the gold base. No, ha Hass actually has a Zealot all in. It's a two gate, though, so I don't think it's that build. So, Hass would take the corner gold base and then build a robo at it and do an immortal slow zealot all in off of the gold base. And it was so, so surprising coming off of an early gold that people would really get caught off guard. Notice he's manually telling these workers to return their minerals so they don't go back to the main. Nice, nicely done. But Protoss is even better at transferring workers, guys, because he just slaps a recall down and they're immediately there. Therefore, Protoss is the best at taking gold bases. Uh, he didn't split his probes up. A little bit lazy there, Australia. Could have done that a little bit more clean. But yeah, he's full walled, guys, right? Wait, wait, that's a diagonal. Guys, he's left an opening there, right? That, that sh I think Zerglings can, can squeeze through this, can't they? Zerglings and Workers, and I think Zealots and Adepts maybe as well. But Stalkers cannot get through that, neither can Roaches. And it's, it's very tough buildings in the walls. So this is actually a very cool placement by Australia. Very technical. Oh, gosh. Okay, doesn't lose anything. Battery's there. Two Adepts are on the way. Link speed started for Rainer. Rainer's already building more Zerglings off 21 workers. No third hatchery for Rainer. He has pulled off gas completely. He is looking to potentially just Ling flood this out, which could work. It could work. All, already a few Lings coming in. He gets two of them inside. I wouldn't mind Australia cancelling the shade there. Oh, Zerglings. Yeah, it's a full Ling flood, man. With a battery and an Adept up in the choke point, though, that's an easy hold. Oh gosh, this is not working for Rainer at all. Rain Rainer needs to pivot to drones. He manages to kill no probes in the main either. Dude, Australia's all over it. The only problem is I think Australia might want to take a third because he's Australia and the man's greed knows no bounds. Realistically, he needs to just keep making units. He's full walled now. Oh, he's supply blocked. He's supply blocked. Okay, he's going to start a third gateway. That's a lot of links. Link speed's about to finish, dude. you got to get these adepts out of here, man. There's drones. He's trying to drill the drones through. Oh, Rain is going for it. No, no, he's going to open the door. He's going to open the door. Oh, no. Without any adepts on the inside, he can't deal with that. Okay, he quickly stops the drones because he has to micro them one onto the patch. Remember, they have to all mine that one that patch one at a time. But he's realizing what's happening. Australia needs to put a unit in this choke point right now. He needs to he needs to just defend that main. Oh, gee, man. Remember, he doesn't have recall for a little while as well. He's pulling his probes. His adept, he's created the little adept fortress there, which is bloody adorable. Um... Oh my god, this Adept Fortress is hilarious. This is actually so sick. If he could battery overcharge as well, the probes will do okay. Oh, he's gonna heal the pylon, heal the pylon. Pylon actually survives, dude. Dude, Adept Fortress Australia. Oh my god. Dude, he's not even losing anything. He's lost three probes. Rainer's dead. 
Well, I mean, he's still got a lot of lings. He's not dead. It's looking bad. <laughs> it's looking really bad. <laughs> what is this series? Dude, Estrella is playing the funnest style. Oh, he doesn't have battery overcharge here. Got to fight with those probes as well. That surround, there's good surface area there. He's got to drill the probes. He's got to drill the probes. Okay, he does kill the Zergans on the inside, which is really good. That battery is going to go down as well. It's hard to get his own units in and out as well. Those Adepts have to shade to get through there by the looks of it. Oh, no, they can walk through it. It's just a bit awkward. Man, that's so many Zerglings. But he's getting hammered. Oh, God, he only left one Adept. He only left one Adept in the choke, and it's it's not the greatest choke point. Oh, okay. That Adept will kill a few Zerglings before it goes down. The rest of the Adepts are coming back. Oh, there's so many Adepts now. He's got it. He's got it. Estrella's got it. The, the, the hold is good. The hold is good. Rainer goes back to droning. He knows he's done. 17, 15 worker advantage. Estrella is floating a ton of money. He should take a third base right now, as well as like a Twilight Council and stuff. He's got no gas mining. He, he's, still, he's only just putting on gas mining now. Oh, gosh. Okay, he's gonna take a third in transition. Estrella's economy is kind of, kind of, kind of gimped here. It's, it's a little bit awkward. Ling's on the high ground. He's gonna wait for Estrella to shade out, and then he's gonna run in there. And, and, and you know Estrella's gonna shade forwards. I mean, Estrella should shade forwards. Honestly, Estrella could maybe a move just to win the game, right, guys? If he just warps in more zealots and stalkers, like, can you really beat this? Yeah, yeah, he's gonna warp in more zealots. Um, just because they only cost minerals, which is a good call. If he just F2 A moves, I just leave this one zealot and adept back at here. I think you'll be fine. He's only gonna go adept though. Oh, he's splitting them. He's splitting them. Oh, gosh. Okay, this is kind of dangerous. This is actually such a weird game right now. Because, yeah, Rain is dead, but he's going to go... Oh, he's going to go straight roaches, which he has to do, because he knows there's a giant attack coming. Estrella's given him a bit too much time. Estrella's made so many unupgraded units. He still hasn't started the Twilight Council. Estrella's just making Mass Gateway with no Twilight Council. He's got a pipe. When did this go up? When did that happen? What? <laughs> what? Has that probe been there all game? He's got a pylon inside Rainer's back door. He's going to shade in and kill a bunch of drones. This is actually really sick harassment. Rainer's economy already sucks right now. But dude, these adepts are going to get two drones and mining time as well. He's shading into another base. The Lings will ruin him there. So he cancels the shade, tries to run away. But uh, looks like these adepts won't be getting much more done. Just mining time and two drones, which isn't bad. Make a Twilight Council, Estrella. Guys, what's he doing? He's massing shield batteries right now. Because he knows there's a Ravager Ling all in coming, I guess. Which makes sense. As long as he has enough gateway units, he can fight it. But he's not got a Robo or a Twilight. He's just making nothing but gateway units. <laughs> Australia's just refusing to make tech. He's like, tech is for pussies. <laughs> uh, that's absolutely how Australia talks, by the way, guys. I'm definitely not putting words in the... Um the, the hippie from San Diego's mouth. No, 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 I would never do never do such a thing. It's mass stalker adept zealot with no upgrades against Ravager Ling. Ravager Ling's the better comp. The worst thing you can do is fight in a choke point. Australia has the numbers. He can A-move this army in the open. But if he gets clumped against Ravagers, that's where things go bad for him. So he's on 43 probes. He finally starts a robo. The mass links around could be big. The bile harassment for Rainer is going to start. I, I, I think Australia's is playing a bit too afraid right now. Remember, he's so far ahead from the early game. And those Biles, you see, once the units clump up, you don't want to fight here. As Australia, you do not want to fight in this area. You need to get in the open ground or these Ravager Biles are going to ruin you. Oh, he does dodge those ones. And the Stalkers can kind of fight. Whoa, he left his door open! The door, he F2'd! Oh, no! Oh, God, oh, God. Okay, Australia F2'd. His third base is now under siege. He has to come into the open to fight this. Biles are going to try to harass. Rainer's, Rainer's Ravager Ling army is kind of getting jumped on. Estrella goes into the open. He tries to pull back on the left side. Army on the right still coming forward, trying to build batteries on the high ground. The army on the left is getting swamped. If he can pull back to the battery, that could be huge. He needs to bring the Adepts down from the main base as well. Adepts are coming in. Gold base will fall. He's going to lose the inside gold base. I mean, that's that's the base that goes down. Rainer gets a snipe. Estrella right now playing some hilariously awesome mass gateway units, which is kind of the most important thing is just have units to survive. But he's got to just fight him in the open. And that's a bar it's a hard decision to make. But if you don't make the decision to fight him in the open, Rain is going to use his positioning to kind of out, out, out match you. So I really think he needs to stop hugging the batteries and, and focus on getting out there as well as get a Twilight Council. You, you've got so many units, you know, Glaive Adepts would be massive here. He's, he's going to have to make it. He just is re refusing to transition. And after losing that third base, he no longer has an economic advantage. He's, he's remaking the Robo. that He made it before it got sniped by the Lings. Rain is, Rain is taking a fourth base over there. Dude, back to that positive trading now for Rainer. After a terrible early game and way less mining, the income was so bad for Australia for so long, but now, now Rain is actually the one who's in the lead. Sorry, sorry, the, the income was so bad for Rainer for so long, but now he's the one who's in the lead. Australia is the one who's trailing in the income. 
I did... This game is so bizarre. What an odd StarCraft game. I love it. Still making mass adept. Problem is, this is... this this Adepts hit an expiry date when they have glaives. These ones don't even have glaives. He's going to try and fight now in the open. He has equal army supply. He definitely could take a big fight. I, I think it's time to just go for Australia. If he waits any longer, I don't see... He's just... Because he's not transitioning, his situation won't get any better. That Adept is not perfectly positioned. Lings can sneak through there. Banelings Nest is on the way. Dude, if he gets Banelings, Adepts are going to be screwed. These... It, Estrella's making Robo Bay. He wants to add Disruptors. Ooh. I mean, these new maps put you in so many weird positions where you have to adapt on the fly. And I think Estrella showed some of the best adaptation with his Adept Fortress in the early game. That was one of the coolest defenses I've ever seen. But his follow-up to it has kind of floundered. He's kind of started to make some dodgy decisions here where a Twilight Council is 150 minerals, 100 gas. Glaives is 100, 100. Or Charge is 100, 100. Or Blink is 150, 150. Any of those would put him in a position where if he's on three bases with Blink right now, you know, and he's just making Stalkers or, or anything like that, even the Glaives added to this army, he might be able to overwhelm, but Banelings are on the way. Roach Speed's on the way. Plus one melee and Baneling Speed are almost done. The Adepts cannot shade on top of those Banelings. He's going to try to do it and, and take some Banes to the face, but look at the, the calm from Raynor. Raynor's like, you want me to blow these Banelings up on these Adepts? No way. Cleans them all up basically for free. Only a few Zerglings going down. Second Robo's on the way. Estrella's realizing, oh god, I need a comeback unit, I need disruptors. But without any meat in his army, like these adepts are near worthless. Raynor panic attacks his own drone there for a moment. Doesn't quite kill it though. First disruptor's about to hit the field, and honestly, a big ball could turn this around for Estrella. But Raynor has a solid lead. He's got a fifth base on the way. I'd like to see Raynor keep expanding. Just because these gold minerals do mine out so quickly, his, his initial gold base is almost mined out. Adepts in the corner. Hey, nice little positioning there for Estrella. Oh god, Banelings coming in! Banelings coming in all sides! The Adepts, the batteries trying to hold the line. The Disruptor shot does zone back Raynor temporarily, but only temporarily. On the bottom right side, the Adepts and Stalkers are starting to get overwhelmed. So much healing from these spread out batteries, but the Banelings are starting to roll through both the Adepts, the shield batteries, and everything else. I love that battery overcharge on the high ground in one of the more protected positions. The Stalker's trying to defend from every side, but it looks like Raynor might just barely have the numbers. Disrupt a shot! Gets himself a Ravager and a couple of Roaches. Not bad, but he's got no firepower behind it. The Stalkers are going to get overwhelmed, and Raynor with an incredible comeback. Oh, man. Estrella leaving that door open and just trying to build mass battery on this base, I think, was a huge mistake. I think instead of that he could have honestly taken this base and, and even just pulled back from the gold if he felt he really couldn't defend it and just like fought in these open areas i i, I really do believe australia had a massive advantage but at some point he uh pulled out of this wall which was a big mistake and and also building these gateways instead of going twilight council i actually think was a mistake as well i think he could have squeezed a twilight council in at the same time as building these gateways and I understand the thought process, and the thought process actually makes a lot of sense. Rain is still desperate. He's going to do a Ravager Ling all in. As long as I have enough units plus battery healing, I will defend, and I'll, I'll win the game. Because he scouts this, and he's like, yeah, look, he hasn't even taken this base. Like, Rain is pretty all in. Maybe he has this hatchery. Maybe even if he does, it's still, you know, come on, man, I'm way ahead. But you say that, and you realize... The upgrade, the twilight, what do you have less? Two or three stalkers? It's not a big difference. And that would have been a complete game changer. GG well played though. Rainer ties up the series and forces a game three. All right, gang. We got Basilisk Gaming's Rainer in the top right side of the map. We've got Estrella in the top left. And it's going to be game three to decide it all on Ghost River. Now, uh, let's be real. Estrella probably should have locked down the 2-0. I understand why he didn't. He kind of lost track of what happened in that game. And I... I think in hindsight, you know, I don't think Estrella realized how well he shut down the first attack. I think in his mind, he'd lost like 10 more probes. Don't get me wrong, having no gas mining for a while there sucks. It's awkward to transition as a Protoss, but I think he didn't realize that he had like double the workers for a good couple of minutes there. Because if he did, I think he would have been much more confident moving out. But we saw Estrella look afraid of the Ravagerling, which normally... With gateway units, you're very afraid of Ravager Ling. You want to fight with batteries, fight with your defenses, don't move out. But mate, when you've got an army the size he did, 
you want to you want to both move out, engage in the open, spread your units ahead of time, and you want to tech up at the same time. He could have done a bit of everything. He could have been in Rainer's face and also, uh, you know, teching up and, and expanding and doing all of that, but played a little bit scared, and unfortunately it does bite him in the butt. It's happened to the best of us. Uh, I can't say he's got a lot of experience defending Ling Floods with a single Adept hidden into an Adept Fortress and 12 probes in his shield battery before. 12, more like 22 probes. But yeah, he only lost three workers, which was so impressive. So hats off to Australia there. I, I really still love the early game. And I think, you know, it's easy when you look at games like that where you go, oh no, you let it slip. Dumb, dumb, dumb. Why be a dumb head? And I think if Australia can just kind of go, well, that was a weird game and I clearly messed it up. But you know, it is what it is. Transition next time. Okay, move on to the next game. I, I think he's pretty good at doing that because he does so many creative strategies. He's constantly in a state of like, hey, this is a situation I haven't been in and I'm just going to try and figure it out on the fly. So I, I don't think Australia kicks himself as much as a guy like Serral or Max Max who really want to perfect a situation over and over again. And then whenever things aren't going their way, you see them get really frustrated. I think a guy like Australia is a bit more chill when he makes the doo-doos. He just kind of goes, oh, that was dumb. <laughs> Let's not do that. Big... We try not to make that mistake again. Move on to the next game. All right, Depp's going to rotate down south. Rainer is on a slight 36 supply block, but it's built into the build order. This is not an accident. Notice he's queuing up the extra overlord and then bam, extra drones do come in. He's already got a few Zerglings there. Going to track that Adept in the natural. This Zergling does sneak in for Rainer, and he will see the Oracle on the way. Our forces are under attack. Adept's going to shade forward. Ling's a little slow to chase, but that's all right. Australia ain't going to risk that one. It's not exactly likely for him to have committed in there, which is why Rainer was a, a bit slow on chasing it. Doesn't cost him anything. Second Oracle's out. Are we going to see number three for Australia? Oh, are we stop stopping? Nope. Okay, three Oracles this time. Good choice. Ooh, Adept gets hunted down. Sorry, guys. Brought that up a bit early. Does kill three Zerglings for an Adept. Great trade for Rainer. Bad for Australia. Australia's also having his third base slightly delayed here. Oracle has to turn the laser beam on. Third Nexus at 356. Not a bad timing. But I like that Rainer's got just that little bit of forward momentum after taking that Adept out. Remember, game one as well. Australia kind of threw his Adept away. So... He's got, to, he's got to clean up this uh, Adept harassment just a little bit. Twilight Council's on the way. Looks like it's probably going to be that, that sort of four-gate blink setup that he did in game one. And I think that's a very good setup. Like, it's so safe. A lot of these maps, there's some real scary roach bushes and queen walks that can come. Four-gate blink is a nice balance of, I'm going to get a lot of stalkers out. I can use that to pressure you, force you to stop droning. And it keeps me safe if it does turn out you're doing a big all-in. So... Nice balance of both worlds as Rainer goes for the quick Evo. That tells us something. He wants to go melee. If he goes melee upgrade, he wants to be Zergling focused to counter the Stalkers. He may be more vulnerable to a Zealot timing and Adept timing, but we know that Australia is going blink, so that's looking pretty good. Technically, you can go plus one range early like that. It's just not what anyone does uh, in the current meta. So, so this is one of those things where it's not like there's a rule like, oh, going plus one range this early is so bad. It's just... Generally, when people want to focus on Zerglings, they really prioritize the upgrade because they, the Zerglings just benefit so much from it. Whereas a plus one attack upgrade for Roaches is nowhere near as important. Oracle run by. Flyby, I should say. Three queens in the main. Wow, eight queens. Eight queens and two spores. My lord, there's safety and then there's, then there's what Rainer's got. And honestly, against three Oracles, that's the way to do it. But actually, the third Oracle got cancelled. And it is four gate blink. Stalker's moving forwards to join those two oracles. Forge comes in behind. Exact same build from game one for Australia. As far as I can tell, this is the exact same build order. Now, notice Rain is on 61 drones and he's had to stop droning and start massing lings. I'd like to see Rainer get either a macro hatchery or a fifth base. He also doesn't have a roach horn. He's floating a little bit of money right now. Not a huge amount, but it is something where if Rainer is just going to build pure zerglings, like he's going to bank money. Doesn't matter how good your injects are, you know, the, the Zerglings are just so cheap for their lava cost. Uh, he's starting to float that money. I'm not liking Rainer's setup at all. Rainer hasn't scouted what the follow up is. He has no idea. There's no Roach Horn, no Bailing Nest. There's a very big lack of safety and respect from Rainer right now. Ray Rainer is playing a little bit sloppy. I, I, I feel like he's not dotting his eyes. He's not crossing his eyes. He has no one looking for the fourth until this moment. He hasn't even scouted the third. He does see the fourth. 
He's going to come down, maybe try and cancel it, try and run in the third, perhaps, but this this feels like Rainer's just playing a very sloppy style right now. I'm, I'm not too keen on it. I, I know it's a bit critical, but I think I think Rainer would probably agree if he looked at this. He's going to go fast lurkers, fast lurkers. Okay, okay, that's the transition. My golly, that's a bit wild. Uh, he does have three queens down here. He could trap the... Oh, he didn't cut off the oracles. Ah, uh, missed opportunity. I don't think it's like he's dead. I just see holes in his game. Now, luckily, none of these holes are getting taken advantage of. You guys are gross. Don't don't take me out of context. I didn't mean it like that. Oi, stop. Strayer and, and Rainer are good boys. Neither one's being dirty right now. Only you guys in Twitch chat and the YouTube comments. I know people had already started typing comments in YouTube, even though that's obviously a day or two later when this video gets posted. I, I can see you guys. Delete it. Don't post it. Naughty. Bad. Bad comment section. Uh, oracles do cancel the fourth, uh, fifth base from going down. Rainer is going to spend a lot of money on Lurkers, at which point he won't really need another hatchery. Now, this is Rainer's special style of Lurkers, which is basically Ling Lurker. Now, the problem with Ling Lurker is he has nothing to actually tank for the Lurkers. The advantage is he's only spent minerals on his army, which means all of his gas goes towards Lurkers, so he can make a silly number of them. Um, if he gets away with this... It, it can just be explosive, especially against Stalker Storm, which is what Australia's is going for. Australia goes double robo. I was talking to Australia the other day. Um, yeah, and he was saying that, like, you know, he's really been having fun with Zerg. He's just been, like, making lurkers and killing people and uh, killing Protoss players in this matchup. Uh, and he said, you know, yeah, it's really funny. Like, no one can stop you just, like, rushing lurkers. This is insane. And I was like, I was saying, well, disruptors are a must. Like, you have to play disruptors if they really commit hard to lurkers. You don't want a lot. Disruptors aren't very good at many other things. You just want three or four. And he was like, oh, disruptors really suck. And I'm like, yep, but they, they counter lurkers really hard. And with these lurker rush styles, they often don't have vipers or spellcasters with them. So you don't even need storm straight away. You can add that later, but you, you really want to get disruptors. Immortals technically can break through, but absolutely getting the double robo pumping as soon as, as possible is massive. And we kind of had like a slight little soft debate over it. And it was, it was interesting because... He was like, no, disruptors aren't that good. I'm like, I'm not saying mass disruptors. I don't say make six disruptors. But man, if you get three or four disruptors, it can wreck a lurker advance. It can absolutely smash it, especially if he's only got Ling Hydra with this and you've already got Storm to deal with all that. Honestly, if he just has Zealot Immortal, he should do fine. The reason being, the lurkers just have no buffer with this style. You don't have a Roach Hydra army in front. You've just got Lings. It's such a greedy build. When Rain, Rain has played this style many times over the last few years, whenever he does, I always feel like it has such extremely good run by potential and high damage. But I've also seen games where like there was that Harstam game on Golden Aura from like three, four months ago where Harstam just destroyed his entire army with Storm plus having enough units spread out to take out the small Lurker count. And, I mean, we've got Lurker upgrades, but there's only seven Lurkers so far. It's not a massive Lurker count. I like that he's going for drops though. Oh, massive zealot run by Australia. Australia's like, uh, let's send 20 zealots to run away. But no, no, no. There's nothing else happening at the same time. So he can't, he can't do that on its own. Good choice to pull back, man. Good choice to pull back. He can beat these Zerglings. With two on upgrades, he can beat them. The Lurker will join in, but this is a good fight for Australia, right? Oh, he jumps on the middle. He jumps on top of the Lurkers at the same time. Great fight on the Lurkers. His zealots are doing all right, too. His zealots should just fight. The zealots were winning that fight, man. The Lurkers, uh, as long as they're out of range of the Lurkers, his Zealots win the fight. He, he takes out the Lurkers in the middle. This is what I'm talking about. Lurkers without support are very vulnerable. Rainer always, he plays this style a lot, but there's like this, this weird thing where if he can get in Australia's bases, he can do big damage. But if he gets jumped on like that, his army falls apart. Carriers are in the way. It's only a two Stargate carrier swap, guys. That Ling drop could cause him big problems. The cannon coming in is huge. If he can get cannons and like warp-ins, it'll be good. But right now, no supply free for warp-ins. Uh, Ling Hydra Lurker splitting up right now. Rainer playing a very melee-focused uh, army with the Zergings, but the Hydra Lurker adding splash damage and range damage in behind are really helping out. Plus one range is now done. Those Zealots get cleansed. Big Zealot warping on the north, but look at that. Look at that. He's, he, he just pulls back. He's like, dude, this is, this is just, literally, this is almost no supply of actual units. What is this? Eight times five. That's 40 supply of Zerg right there. It's not a big commitment, and they, they're basically free units. Lings are cheap, man. He's got 88 drones. I like the storm coming in. I don't know why he committed to the drop. I guess he was just like not really paying attention. But uh, anyways, does back off. Loses a few Zergings. As I said, they're free units. It doesn't really cost him anything. Australia's going for a third Stargate. Plus three uh, ground weapons is on the way. He's, he's kind of stalled out on his uh, shield upgrades. He really should be adding shield 
right now to, to the, get the air. Plus two air weapons is huge. Locus are there. Five Immortals are out though, six High Templar. They're stacking double storms now as well. Notice these energy, full energy High Templar in the middle of that ball. Things in the south, army moving up here. Astraea sees it. He could come in from two sides and sandwich this army. But does he actually have enough to do that? Storm does damage some of those units. It doesn't really kill too much. Ooh, Astraea let him move into a good position. It looks like he's setting up a surround. Is this enough? He's going for it. Big surround comes in from three sides. Great angle for Estrella. Oh, perfect angling. Ling's coming in from the bottom. Might get rid of some of these immortals, though. Oh, my God. These, these fights suck for, for Raynor, right? They killed some stuff. He's only down 4,000 resources and the units lost. He's had a good income. I take it all back. If we, if we join those fights together, I think it was worth it. <laughs> the failings roll in. Estrella not looking loses 30 probes to a big roly-poly of failings. Don't get me wrong. Estrella has the money and the bases to recover that. But now he feels like he's got a counter push to do some damage. And there's no lurkers. There's seven lurkers morphing. I don't know about pushing right now. I think Estrella can recover in the long game. Remember that Raynor does not like slowing down to Broodlords. It is the last thing he wants to do. Raynor likes movement-focused ZVP. As long as we stay in this stage where he's running lings in, denying bases, running around, doing lurker harassment drops, that's where Reyna thrives. But you've got to split your army back up, Astray. You can't be clumping your army on one side of the map. Oh, man. The moment of him pulling his army together lazily gets punished instantly. Lings run in, take out the battery. You do not want to lose that ship weapon. Zealots barely defending the south. Dude, these plus three melee adrenal zerglings are ruining... They're doing so much damage. Cannon's doing well in the natural. Cannon in the main should be able to hang on if he warps in a few units, but oh my god, he hasn't yet. That cannon's going to go down. He does warp in a few zealots. Lurkers on the south. Oh no! Estrella! His whole army's in a blob again! He's blobbing it! Oh no! Estrella has to split this army in two halves. One in the north, one in the south. That's what he did before. That's how he clapped that lurker push. Unfortunately, a moment of inattention lost him the banelings, and he panicked. And since then, his army's been in one big ball. He needs to be coming from two sides and sandwiching Reyna to punish him. The carriers can overwhelm this. The carriers can win this fight on their own. If the carriers go in on their own, he wins it without any losses. But honestly, he's got enough units. What's he going to lose? A few zealots? Great fight for Estrella. Estrella wrecks that army. Extra observer comes in from behind. Super nice trades. He still had 5,000 resources and the units lost. Problem? He's got no money anymore. Estrella lost his fourth. He lost his probes. He's making mama, and he's going to go all in. And I think that's the best way to try to win this game right now. The Corruptors do not have any upgrades, and yet he's trying to build them because he needs something to deal with these carriers. So 10, 10 of those plus two air weapons is done. Mama pops out. Lings are going to try and do some, some nice run-ins on the third. And, oh, dude, Estrella is not ready for that at all. Battery overcharge and probes fighting. Plus three adrenal zerglings are going to just smack right through here. Zealots coming from behind could help out a little, though. But that's he's going to lose. Yeah, that's it. Estrella's income's gone. Estrella is all in right now. This army basically has to win the game. He's going to warp in a few more zealots, which is nice. They'll, they'll eventually defend that base. But, oh, the recall. He does a recall and a time warp. Nice repositioning attack. Lewis. Rainer to the south, recalls to the north. This is the sort of move that if you have an economy behind it, you are miles ahead, but he does not. And more Zerglings going across. Abduct comes in. Mama gets yanked to her death. Oh, could he abduct a carrier? Oh, the carriers get the Vipers. Both Vipers go down. Nice snipes there for Estrella. Estrella's just got to make sure he doesn't lose the base trade. He's got to make sure he doesn't lose the base trade. Oh, damn. He, he's going to lose everything to those because he's got no income. He needs some more Archons at home to defend that. If he can get Archons up in choke points, he might be okay. But without Archons, I think these Lings are actually doing too much damage. The reason I'm not looking at this is he's just killing buildings. Reyna doesn't want to risk fighting. It's too dangerous for him. Zealot's going down there as well. He's going to have to use that gas to make some Archons. Plenty of minerals to remake carriers for now. Carrier... Oh my god. Oh, Carrier goes way too far forward. Big Storm on the Corruptors. Gets a Hydra as well. But that was, that was a bit awkward losing that Carrier. Remember, you've only got five of these. Plus three air attack may be on the way, but you really need to hang on. The natural is not walled off. There are cannons there. There is a fourth base down the bottom that Rainer will find in a moment and go, oh, no, make sure that doesn't happen. Rainer's mining money. Estrella is not. Estrella is out of minerals. He spent his last minerals. He can't rebuild the interceptors. Storm on the lurkers. The Archon Immortal trying to come forward. The carrier micro is good. The lurkers reposition back. Transfuse trying to go down. Rainer trying to hold on. It should have been a 2-0 in Estrella's favor. But Rainer is trying to make one of those comeback kid moves that he is so famous for. Unfortunately, he just can't quite do it. Estrella.
<laughs> gets caught out time and again there by the run buys, but the counter push just can't get dealt with. You know, it, the, the Corruptors only have plus one armor against plus two attack. The Archons and the Storms do the work. And uh, there was a few too many positive army trades, even though Astraea, it's like, this was a fun game. So, so let me explain this, because I know there's going to be people balance winding. I want to explain a few things. Astraea destroyed Reyna's army twice, but his economy got destroyed twice. So there's going to be people going, oh, you kill all those probes and you still lose. How disgusting is this matchup? Guys, I want to I want to remind the Zerg players who are going to be complaining here. And there'll be Protoss players complaining as well, because a lot of people don't understand how StarCraft works and think whining is the best way to do it. I'm sorry, guys, throwing shade. Your goal is to kill the Protoss army, not their economy. Going after their economy is a means to an end. Because if you go after their economy in different areas, the Protoss has to split up, and, and, and that's where you find good trades. So normally the goal in ZVP is to kill the Protoss army before they reach the death ball status, before they get all the ultimate units together. If you want to play against the ultimate units, you can do it, but you need to be willing to play that kind of Serral style, Broodlord, Infesta, Viper, really technical, slow, ultra late game style. Rainer doesn't play that. I mentioned that before. He will begrudgingly go there, but only after many, many fights and stages and when he really gets forced to that stage. He'll try to win earlier. So you can see it in this lead up stage, right? He's vying for control. Both sides are trading. It's been positive in Australia's favor, but it's not like there's a massive lead either way. Now, when he goes for this push, it's actually not a bad push, but I think maybe he should have shoved a bit harder. I think the mistake that Raynor made, you could argue, is maybe he should have tried to collapse on one, one half of the army. By, by, by sitting back so far, Australia is able to set up a surround, but this is a beautiful engagement. I mean, look at the value that Australia is getting in this fight. He's cleaning up everything, but what does he not pay attention to? The Banelings. So, so something goes super badly for Raynor, and then something goes really well for Raynor, right? And that's still, it's not cheap. That's still a lot of Banelings. That's not cost for cost an amazing trade. But then it's like, okay, so, so we're kind of one for one. It's still like a pretty even game at this point, I would say. But then he finds a base. Okay, that's good. But more importantly, Australia massively screws up. F2A moves his whole army here. Massively screws up and lets Rainer run in and start doing damage on both sides. And this is this is the kind of the big mistake moment where you're like, oh God, and now Rainer's, you know, finding pickoffs and getting damage and tearing his economy. Luckily though, it's not that much damage, is it? Even though he made a positional mistake, this is the only big damage. He spends a lot of Lings, Hydra's Lurkers, all getting cleaned up. What does he get for value? He's not killing many units. He's mostly washing up on cannons and batteries. This is the only value down here on the very bottom side. So he does get some good value, but he just threw away a lot of army into cannons and batteries and, and stuff. Once again, units lost tab. It's a bit better for Rainer. The, the gap is closing a little, you know? But then it's like, oh God, what's about to happen? He's going to lose his whole army for one zealot. So this was a real seesaw where we saw both sides getting a mixture of success and failure, where Australia failed very hard to defend his economy but he excelled in the army versus army fights and, and vice versa for Raynor. And that's why this game was so close. You know, that's why this game was, I was unsure who was going to win towards the end of it because I didn't know just how much Raynor would get out. Would he get enough corruptors and lurkers to deal with it? Turns out, no. The, the army versus army fights were a bit too negative. The, these lings weren't quite able to force, you know, enough damage on the other side. And even though he played a very, very cute game, the recall was great for Australia. And uh, yeah, he wins the game in the end. I mean, uh, just an awesome series, though. Hats off to Rainer for making that comeback, though, on um, on Post Youth. That was incredible. Like, you're not meant to make that comeback. So hats off to Rainer. That was actually sick that he even made it to game three. GG, well played.